Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and today I want to do a spotlight on an old mechanic. We're gonna look at what worked and what didn't from a design perspective, and if I think it's an if or a win for seeing this mechanic again. Let me know if you'd like to see more like this in the comments down below. So today, let's talk about Morph. Debuting an Onslaught block in 2002, this mechanic blew people's minds. Morph is a mechanic where you can pay three mana to play a creature face down as a 2-2. Then, later on, you can turn it face up for its morph cost. Inspired by the wild alpha card, Illusionary Mask, this mechanic initially had people divided. Would this be fun? Would people just start playing anything face down as a morph and cheating? And of course, would this kill magic? Well, of course it didn't, and it ended up being quite popular. It appeared in Onslaught block first, then later on in Time Spiral block, and then eventually in Cons of Tarkir block. It even got a whole morph commander deck. Let's start with the positives around Morph. First of all, bluffing is a lot of fun, and Morph really lets you do that. Is your face down to to a mere spine basher or a silent specter in waiting? Your opponent has no way of knowing. Especially for an experienced player who knows the morphs out there, there is a ton of fun in this element of the mechanic. Second, it's a way to get big things quicker. While bluffing satisfies the spike player, morph can also satisfy the Timmy Tammy player. Sagu Mauler is normally a six mana card, but if you morph it, you can get your six six attacking on turn five, two turns earlier than you normally would. Third, it's a great smoothing mechanic. Morph being in the format means you will normally have a turn three play. And in Cons of Tarkir, for example, that helped with mana fixing as well. Stuck on two colors, just play a morph. At common, there's a cycle of three color morphs so that you didn't need all three colors of mana early. You could play one down, and then once you had all three colors, flip it up. Definitely a lot of cool stuff there. Now, let's look at the negatives. On the other end of the bluffing spectrum is memorization. While someone who has drafted the set a ton might really enjoy the nuances around knowing what face down cards the opponent might have, if you don't have that knowledge, it can be very frustrating. What morph could your opponent have in their white deck? Well, it could be literally anything if you don't know what cards are in the format. And this goes hand in hand with what I call the turn four dilemma. You play a morph on turn three, then I play a morph on my turn three. Then you attack with your morph. Should I block? The choice is nearly at random. And this is exemplified with the classic red duo of Battering Craghorn and Skirk Commando. If you do block and they have Battering Craghorn, they just killed off your creature, but get to keep theirs. But if you don't block and they have Skirk Commando, they killed off your creature and get to keep it theirs. This kind of situation wasn't the best gameplay. Fortunately, we fixed this problem in Cons of Tarkir, and it's so smooth, you might never have even noticed. We instituted a design rule that any morph which could kill another morph in combat and live costs at least five mana to turn face up. That way, this turn four dilemma is never really an issue. The creatures will always trade off. It's this tiny invisible gameplay solution which really made a big difference. Next, there's the new player problem. This one is overcomable, but definitely strange. Let's say you're sitting down to play against a new player. On turn three, you play a face down creature. If they ask what it is, you have to explain it's a two two for three mana. And if they ask, well, can I read the card to see what it does? You have to tell them, no. It sounds like you're cheating. Awkward. Next, there's an issue of rate. A three mana 2-2 two -two is not a great card. It was already weak back in Onslaught block and even weaker today. For limited, this can work if we design the draft experience around it. But especially for constructed play, it makes designing strong morphs a lot more challenging. In fact, when we were trying the mechanic in Cons of Tarkir, we even tested a version called Borf, which were two mana two twos, and a version called Smorf, which were four mana three threes. Great names, I know. But the idea was, we would get them to be rates that were a little stronger for constructed play. Ultimately, neither worked out, but the issue remains. Making cards you're excited to cast as three mana two twos in constructed means that often the morph has to be a free bonus, like on Rattleclaw Mystic, or give you a strong effect, like on Den Protector. And finally, there's the problem of set infrastructure. Morph is a bluffing mechanic. To make morph work, you have to include a lot of morph cards. This makes it hard to just sprinkle 
into a set because it's no good if there's just a couple cards it could be. This also hinders us in commander deck building too. Putting one morph into a deck list isn't really good practice because then someone will just want to go look at the list on their phone to figure out which morph you just played. So final verdict, if or when on morph, is it a maybe we'll do it again or a definitely we'll do it again. Despite the challenges, I believe Morph is strongly a win. We have to have the right set for it and build around doing it, but it's just too much fun to leave sidelined. Very little in Magic captures the on-the-table bluffing like Morph does. Plus, there's still Spell Morph from the Mystery Booster Playtest card, Spell Morph Raise Dead, to make work. So that's Morph. Would you like to see Morph again? And which mechanic do you want to see an if or win video on next? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll talk with you again on Wednesday. And in the meantime, may you outbluff your opponent. You got this. The idea of showing two pieces, one for each half, oriented in the direction of that half of the card was cool. However, in practice, it kind of became a jumbled blur at card size. When you're looking at a card in your hand or across the table, it's so hard to see the details. And although the artists tried mightily to create